Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina. Today we're going to be having a look at my Jabba the Hutt's Palace diorama, as you can see on the top shelf. And right below that is my Mose Eisley Cantina diorama, which we looked at in my previous video. So like my Mose Eisley Cantina diorama, my Jabba's Palace diorama is uh, one of the centerpieces of my collection and uh, I absolutely had a lot of fun putting it together. And uh, you know, it's really great to be able to look at and enjoy. I started the Java's Palace diorama probably around 2003, uh, just after I had started my Mosaisley Cantina diorama. What I did is order the Hasbro uh, Java's Palace 3D cardboard diorama, which you can see in the back. And uh, you know, from there I just started placing a whole bunch of figures on the shelf that were, uh, you know, in Java's Palace during that scene in uh, Star Wars Episode Six, Return of the Jedi. Now, like my cantina diorama, um, this one was located at my parents' house in Texas for about 11 years, and uh, I very recently went to visit them and said, hey, you know, I need to get those dioramas and a bunch of other stuff uh, sent to my husband and I's house here in California. So, um, you know, the dioramas relocated along with a whole bunch of other things. And um, to get them to fit onto this shelf, I did have to do a little bit of splicing and rearranging of things. So, you know, this isn't how the cardboard diorama looked. Um, out of the package. I did have to shuffle some things around uh, and do a little bit of trimming and such. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. So let me go ahead and get us started here going from left to right and uh, you know we'll see everything going on here in Java's Palace. So down here um, we have Hermie Odal, the leftmost figure there, uh, which was part of the 30th anniversary collection. And uh, he's quite large, um, you know one of the larger figures for Star Wars ever produced. Um, I have the band situated toward the back. Now, I don't have all the band members, um, and I certainly don't have all the dancers out. Um, you know, there's just simply not enough room on this diorama to fit them all, so I just fit my favorite ones. I have Max Rebo in the back, um, you know, with his keys. Then I have the Bith player there. Um, I got both of the drummers there. Um, both of those drummers, uh, I believe, I want to say they were both Legacy Collection figures, and each one came with half of the drum, and then you know, you would assemble it once you got both figures. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, I think that's Dota Bandanuido in the back on, you know, saxophone or like similar kind of instrument. Um, in the past, I have had uh, Hansel and Carbonite out on the uh, diorama, but this is supposed to kind of be like after he's already been released from the Carbonite. So I didn't place it in here anywhere. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have... Uh, that droid guy back there. I think it was also 30th anniversary collection. Pretty neat figure and you know we did see him a couple times in Jabba's Palace. We have um, a Jawa who is just walking through back there. We have R2-D2. This is the vintage collection release that had the little uh, drink tray on him. Uh, there, were, uh, there was another version uh, of him from uh, 2004 but uh, you know this is obviously the superior release. You have this guy who kind of has the skunk tail um, back there. <laughs> um, really cool alien figure. And, you know, back in 2004, Hasbro really ramped things up with Jabba's Palace aliens. And this is one of the uh, the better efforts. The other one was um, was Rapper Tooney, that other band member that's back there sitting on his, uh, his chair with his um, thing that he's playing somehow. Uh, really neat figure. Uh, we have Biomar Monk. This one came as part of the three-pack um, from the uh, Star Wars line back in 2004. Uh, it was one of the ultra uh, deluxe sets, and it was, I believe the pack was called Jabba's Palace Denizens, and it had Biomar Monk, which is a repaint of a previous figure from the Power of the Force 2 line. Really cool-looking spider thing. And it also had um, that little dude up there who's got, got the tongue. You know, you do see him in Jabba's Palace just kind of hanging out, so <laughs> pretty funny. And then we have Tessic, who's, you know, one of my favorite Jabba's Palace aliens from the Power of the Jedi lineup. And then we have, uh, you know, Jabba's, uh, one of her, his dancers, um, you know, back there. Really nice lead on figure. Not one of my favorite characters, personally, but I think the design uh, and execution in that figure is really, really nice. Uh, we have Effent Mon, um, you know, who's probably the largest basic Star Wars figure ever produced. He's a really, really big, and he's definitely bigger than Hermie Odal by a little bit, and uh, also probably one of the coolest Star Wars figures ever done, just because of his sheer size. Um, but also, the detail's really nice. He's got a hinged jaw, and, uh, you know, very, very cool. Got a cane. And uh, here we have a Rodian, and this is actually the 30th anniversary of Vintage Collection Greedo, 
and uh, I decided to stick him here in this diorama since, you know, most Rodians seem to look more or less the same in the original trilogy as far as their clothing goes. And then here we have Jaquiel, who was also part of the 2004 Star Wars lineup. And uh, he actually shares quite a few parts with Tannis Spyjack, who is the uh, skunk-tailed guy back here that also has memories for some reason. And uh, obviously different colors, different heads, a few different parts, but, you know, all around the same base figure. And then we have Reis, who is the most recently released uh, Jabba's Palace alien. And uh, this is from the Star Wars Black series, who came out uh, last year, 2014. And then um, we have a mysterious figure just standing in front of Jabba. I wonder who that is. Well, if we grab him and take a look, we actually have Luke Skywalker. And this is the uh, Vintage Collection uh, Deleted Scene release. And, uh, you know, I thought it'd be fitting to have him in there, just like he was in the film. And it doesn't look like he's going to want to stand back up. Um, but yeah, there's our Jabba the Hutt. This is actually the one from a few years ago that was a Walmart exclusive that came with the, uh, um, the throne and all the little pillows and it came with Celestia's Crumb and it came with Ula who, you know, by this point in my diorama has already been fed to the ranker. So, um, you know, she's out of the equation here. Um, that Jabba's pretty nice. I don't know that he's my favorite Jabba. I actually really like the one from 2004, the uh, Ultra Deluxe set Jabba, who I think looks a little bit better, but since this is the most recent one, you know, I thought, hey, I'll, I'll go ahead and stick him in here. Plus, he has an articulated tail, which is pretty neat. You can move it around. Um, you have uh, Princess Leia, who is from the 2010 Legacy Collection, uh, and as you probably know, um, came with legs so that you can stand her up, or, um, you know, that bottom piece there where she's, like, sitting on a pillow, and uh, I have that chain there. I believe I took that chain from the um, Attack of the Clones Padme figure from 2002 uh, where she was tied up, you know, in the Geonosis arena. And, uh, you know, it seems to look pretty nice. Uh, Salacious Crumb, again, you know, came as part of um, the set with Jabba. You know, pretty comical guy. Uh, and he was actually a repaint of a previous uh, release. Of and then up there, above the stairs, we have Bib Fortuna, who is part of the uh, Star Wars Saga collection from 2006. And probably the best uh, Bib Fortuna you can get up to this point. And right next to him is Boba Fett, um, also from the 2006 Saga collection. This is not the best Boba Fett that Hasbro's put forth. Um, but, you know, I didn't need something super articulated up here, so I thought he was one of the nicer ones. And, uh, you know, he's got the Return of the Jedi coloring, which makes him totally suitable for this diorama. Back there we have Lando Calrissian as Skiff Guard. That's the one from the Vintage Collection, also from the deleted scene. I simply removed, um, you know, his robe and, you know, his, his coverings that were on his face. Um, definitely the most articulated um, Jabba's Palace-based uh, Lando that, that's out there. And then we have the Vintage Collection C-3PO in the back, who is a little bit short. But, you know, what can you do? I really like this uh, base that came with Jabba the Hutt. Um, you know, I think that's a really, really nice uh, thing that, that Hasbro finally got around to doing after all this time. And, uh, you know, it's really, really cool. All these little bits seem to be like metal, and uh, I think, and, uh, you know, really nice. All the little faces. Almost something, it's almost kind of like seeing little gargoyles all the way around. Really, really cool. And then the pillows, you can move those around as you please, and then... This piece here is a repack, um, you know, the hookah and then the little um, railing back there. You know, that's a repack from the Ultra Job of the Hut from 2004. Now, we have a uh, vintage collection Gamorrean Guard, who is one of my favorite figures out in the whole Star Wars line. I just think that Hasbro did an amazing job with this guy. Uh, they went all out, and, uh, you know, he's really nice. And I'd like to get another one. So far, I only have one. Um, you know, of this specific release. I have a bunch of the older ones from the original trilogy collection, but, you know, I'd like to get another one of these. Um, and then we have Malakali, who is the Rancor Keeper, right there. And, uh, you know, he's he's still a little bit happy. He's got a little bit of a, you know, a smile on his face because, you know, he knows Luke's going to be fed to the Rancor, but, you know, he doesn't know that Luke's going to kill the Rancor. And then we have his pal, the, the Claw 2 guy. Uh, I want to say that... Um, was, uh, you know, down in, in the pit after Luke killed the Rancor and was also, um, you know, kind of sad along with Malakini that he was dead. We have in the back, uh, you know, in the little entryway, the um, Power of the Force 2 Sailed Marae Yak Face. 
Uh, unfortunately, Hasbro has not gone around to redoing him as of yet. Hopefully they do, because this guy's way overdue. Um, so, you know, he looks a little bit, you know, <laughs> more colorful than any of the others. But, um, uh, you know, still a pretty nicely done figure, I, I suppose, you know, for Power of the Force two days. But uh, hopefully they get around to redoing him. And then behind him, there's just like a Jawa kind of just like, you know, hanging out back there. And then, um, you know, we have this guy who, who's kind of like a dog. You see him barking the first time we go into Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi. And uh, this was also part of the Jabba's Denison's uh, three-pack of figures. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is my Jabba's palace diorama. I hope you enjoyed looking at it. One of the centerpieces of my collection, for sure. And, um, you know, the backdrop, I think, you know, still holds up after all this time, you know, as, as old as it is. Um, you know, I, I, I hope the Hasbro, you know, one day decides to do more of these or, you know, maybe they'll even update the Cantina or update Jabba's Palace, um, you know, because, uh, you know, they're really cool and they, I think they really add a lot, um, you know, to any shelf display for sure. Um, I really like all these pieces here. I think Hasbro did a nice job of most all of these Jabba's Palace denizens and alien figures and, um, you know, Jabba the Hutt and the Throne, all really nice stuff and, uh, you know, always a treat to, uh, to enjoy here in my um, office slash collection room. Thanks for watching Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.